The London Route, Chapter 4 Tendai came home from work one evening and very excitedly she informed Chennai that the following weekend was bank holiday. Tendai went on to explain to Chennai that bank holiday was a whole three days holiday for workers and students because banks, government buildings, independent businesses, as well as schools and universities, would be closed. She further explained that on bank holiday public transport ran a Sunday service, and big stores would have reduced opening hours. But people working in hospitality, hospitals, elderly care workers, and disability care workers would work as usual but get double pay for a shift that fell on bank holiday. How do you propose that we make the most of the long weekend, Chennai asked. If you'd like, we can visit a seaside town called Klekton on Sea and it will be a lovely experience, Tendai suggested. Chennai googled Klekton on Sea and she was super excited that the seaside town offered an array of entertainment and she agreed to Tendai's proposal. She was very excited because the trip to Klekton on Sea would be her first time traveling away from London and she would get to see the English countryside. When the day for the trip to Klekton on Sea dawned, Chennai could not contain her excitement. The weather was warm as the sun peeked through the clouds. Tendai and Chennai were happy that the weather forecast had predicted that the entire bank holiday weekend would be sunny and warm. Chennai and Tendai got up early in the morning and took a 1 hour and 44 minutes bus trip from London to Klekton on Sea. Chennai found it refreshing when the scenery changed, and the sprawl of endless flats gave way to the beautiful English countryside. The road wound down and dropped to sea level and Chennai caught her first glimpse of the shimmering sea, and she took deep breaths of the salty sea air and marveled at the spectacular view around her. Upon arrival at Klekton on Sea, Chennai and Tendai first visited the main shopping area, which had chain stores and banks that they were familiar with as well as other local stores, restaurants, cafes, and souvenir stores. They also walked around a car boot sale, seeing all the different stuff that was on sale and they visited the bustling town market. Chennai and Tendai then changed into their swimming gear and headed to the sandy beach with many palm trees. A lot of families were out and about, splashing and swimming in the water, surfing, walking along the beach, playing beach volleyball, and children building sandcastles. They then visited Klekton on Sepia, which hosted a variety of indoor and outdoor activities. They had a go at some of the games and in one of the games, Chennai won a cuddly teddy bear. They also had rides in go-karts and on the merry-go-round. After watching a Punch and Judy puppet show, Chennai and Tendai took a stroll on the promenade. There were several ice cream and fish and chips kiosks along the way. As they walked along the promenade, they watched large ships as they docked or left the harbor. After the stroll along the promenade, they made their way back to the beach and spread a picnic blanket on the sandy beach and ate their lunch. After having had their fill, they gathered their stuff and got ready to leave. They were happy that Klekton on Sea had offered them many fun activities and that they had spent an exciting and memorable day. Before returning to London, Chennai and Tendai made a stopover at the historic town of Colchester. After their brief tour of Colchester town, they would then board a bus back to London. Their first port of call was Colchester Castle which is one of the most important heritage sites in England. The castle was built between 1069 and 1076 under the order of William I, son of William the Conqueror. They also took a stroll in the magnificent lush green gardens surrounding the ruins of Colchester Castle. They also visited the Colchester Wall whose construction took place between 65 and 80 AD following the destruction of Colchester Town during the revolt by Queen Boudicca against Roman rule. They also visited the Colchester History Museum which exhibits the history of Colchester, the people, and the institutions associated with it. After taking a walk along Colchester High Street, Tendai and Chennai boarded a bus back to London. The following day Tendai escorted Chennai on a guided tour of central London's historic landmarks. Among tourists from different countries, Tendai and Chennai boarded a tour bus and after the tour guide welcomed tourists, he told them that the tour of historical London would be an overwhelming experience that would remain imprinted upon their memory. As the tour bus drove along the streets of London, the tour guide gave the tourists information about each landmark that they visited. At some of the historic places the tour bus stopped, and everyone hopped out and had a look around. 
The first stop was at the London Tower, which the tour guide told them is also known as the Bloody Tower, because of its morbid history. Criminals were once held at the tower, and it was said that beheadings and torture happened in the tower in the past. Some people claimed to hear piercing screams echoing from the London Tower. The next stops included Big Ben, St. Paul's Cathedral, the London Parliament Houses, and the London Eye. When the tour bus stopped at Trafalgar Square, the tour guide told the tourists that Trafalgar Square was a proud center of London, which was built to commemorate the British naval victory of 1805 during the Napoleonic Wars. As Chennai had seen in many photos and videos of London, Trafalgar Square was full of pigeons and large streams of people. Chennai was reminded of the nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down, as the bus rode over Tower Bridge, an iconic London landmark, which is a drawbridge that crosses the River Thames. Chennai was marveled by the specimens on display at the Natural History Museum, which exhibits a vast range of specimens from various segments of natural history. The Natural History Museum was referred to by some people as the Dinosaur Museum because it has specimens of different types and sizes of extinct dinosaurs. It was very exciting for Chennai to visit a significant structure in British history, Westminster Abbey, an Anglican church since 1066, which had been the location of the coronations of many English and British monarchs. This beautiful Gothic church is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Next, the tour bus took the tourists to Hyde Park, a serene and beautiful vast garden. Since the late 1960s Hyde Park had been an important venue for many rock music concerts. Performers such as Brian Adams, Cliff Richards, Lisa Stansfield, Simply Red, Bon Jovi, Elton John, Bruce Springsteen, Phil Collins, and Justine Bieber had performed their international gigs at Hyde Park. The tour bus then took the tourists to visit the Albert Memorial, which was unveiled in 1872 by Queen Victoria in memory of her beloved husband, Prince Albert who died in 1861. As the tourists concluded their tour of the City of London, the tour guide told them that the tour would not be complete without visiting Buckingham Palace. Tourists marveled at the palace and the tour guide mentioned that had their visit to Buckingham Palace coincided with the changing of the guards, it would have been thrilling to watch the ceremony. After the tour of Buckingham Palace, the tour concluded, and as the tour bus drove back to its starting point, Tendai told Chennai that several road names and place names in London also existed in Zimbabwe. She mentioned street names such as Montgomery, Horse Ferry, and Albion, and place names such as Greencroft, Avondale, and Kensington. Chennai did not find this surprising because Zimbabwe had once been colonized by Britain. End of part 4